All right, we are setting up. And I believe we are live. Yay! Hello, Arty peoples, and welcome to another episode of Jerry's Live. Uh, my name is Amy Klein, and I'm your host this evening. And as you can see, we have the amazing and very knowledgeable Kevin Greeland back with us tonight. So thank you so much for showing up, Kevin. I appreciate it. Hi, Emmy. Thank you for inviting us. Thanks to yeah. Jerry's as well. Um, today, we're going to take a look at our five lines of paint and then how we could kind of combine some of those for different uh, techniques. So we I'm are, gonna... we are so excited about that. Yeah, now, definitely. If you guys are interested in anything that Kevin is going over or any of the products that he is using, uh, go to the website jerrysartorama.com and type in today's class code, which is JL236. 236. So that will pull up the teacher's card and everything that you are going to be using today uh, should pop up. So you guys want to check it out that way. But um, without further ado, Kevin, please take it over. I'm so excited for today's show. All right. Thanks, Emmy. Um, and we do have a material application specialist that's answering some questions in the chat. Um, so you can always put your question in there. Um, also, if you uh, don't get your question answered, um, you can always email us at help at goldenpaints.com and we'll put that up at the end again. Um, so two ways to get your questions answered and hopefully I'll cover most of those. So let's go ahead and we're gonna switch our camera. Um, we're gonna be talking about our five lines of paint. Um, so the very first one that's up is our heavy body colors. And um, most people probably recognize this white tube. Um, this happens to be our heavy body cadmium red. We have five lines. So we're gonna walk through each of those five first. So heavy body, uh, first colors offered by Golden, kind of um, a smooth and buttery consistency. Um, you can see I've squeezed some out here dry and, and brushed it out. And then we're gonna do the same wet. Uh, the thing that I'll mention um, with the heavy body is there are no fillers or extenders or pacifiers used. Um, pretty much it, whatever I do to it, whether it's with a palette knife or a brush, it's going to hold um, that texture. So if I brush it out, you can kind of see the brush strokes in there. And if I use a palette knife, so whatever way or state that I leave this in, when it dries, it's going to dry exactly like that. So that is our heavy body colors. Uh, we're going to take a look next at our fluid. Now, before me... you jump off of the heavy body, when that dries, what is the sheen like? Is that like a glossy or like a semi-gloss? This one is kind of, um, if you look at this here, this is dry. So this is kind of, um, I would say semi-gloss. It looks a little glossier when it's wet. Um, mm -hmm. Just, you know, um, but there is a little bit of a color shift and sheen shift as it dries there. Which, I mean, um, and, I feel like that happens with every acrylic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and as noted, we have on all of our colors, we put these little black bars and a swatch of the paint. So you can kind of look there for its transparency or its opacity. And some of that is dependent, again, too, on how thick you put that on there. So that's the first one, heavy body, first colors offered by Golden, uh, thick and buttery, holds its texture. The next one up is our fluid. Uh, different container. Of course, these say fluid acrylics off the top there underneath the, the golden logo. Um, they don't hold as much texture if I put some out and use a brush on that. You can kind of see I can get a little bit of volume built up, but not too much compared to the heavy body. Um, again, just like the heavy body paints, these have no opacifiers or toners um, in them. Um, they're great for detail work, um, great for underpainting. So lots of different options there. And that is our fluid. So let me switch over and we'll look at our open. So the open um, is uh, in similar um, fashion to the heavy body. It's a little bit softer. And this is the one that is a slow drying acrylic. So if we look at that tube, uh, right on there, it says slow drying acrylic, and that means that it takes quite a while to dry. Um, it also comes with this kind of black barrel and a black top. So let me go ahead and squeeze a little bit of that out. 
And as I said, this is a little softer than our heavy body colors. Um, and it's definitely a slow drawing acrylic. And what that means is that um, it can be used in a lot of different ways, plain air painting, you can use it for printmaking. Um, if you mix up special color mixes, you can keep those in containers, um, or if you use a sealed palette, um, you'll be able to carry those colors over for days or even possibly um, a week or more. So open, very versatile, uh, slow drying. So that is our open. Now, as far as kind of a contraction when it dries, how, how much of a contraction does that open kind of pull down as it's drying? Uh, not very much. You can see here, this is um, the dry version. And this is the wet version. So you're still able to get a lot of texture there, just like you would with the heavy body. The one thing I'll, I will say is um, here where I put this out and here where it's very thick, um, that's going to stay wet for quite a while. We don't recommend that you put it on that thick. I've exaggerated that for you. Um, we recommend one millimeter or, or less. Um, as I said, it can take a long time to dry. Um, but it can be mixed with heavy body and you can accelerate its drying time by mixing it. And so what I've done here is this is our heavy body. That's the one in the white tube. And then our open, this is the slow drying acrylic. And I've mixed those on a one to one ratio. And so we get this green value here in the middle. And you can see all three are kind of wet. If I swipe my brush across those um, or uh, use a color shaper across there, the heavy body was wet. The mix one to one ratio was wet, as well as the slow drying open acrylic at 15 minutes. Uh, if I wait another 15 minutes and go to a total of 30 minutes, you can see my heavy body is dry. My blend, I was able to pull a little bit of that out. And then of course the open by itself was quite wet. I'm waiting an hour, 60 minutes. I was able to mar that surface a little bit on the mixture, but with the open, I was able to pull that all the way out and then even to 90 minutes. So with the open, with the open, um, just remember it's slow drying. And if you use a sealed palette, you can carry this over for days or weeks. Um, again, any sealed container, if you do special mixes, you won't be wasting paint. You can carry over those blends or mixes as well. So that is our open. Now we're gonna take a look at our high flow. Move that out of the way. So here we have our high flow Queen Magenta. Let me center that for you. And um, you'll notice that this one says, um, compared to the fluid, if we look at that fluid, you'll see that this is horizontal across there and it says fluid acrylics. This one, so you can tell the difference, um, says high flow acrylics on there. So high flow acrylics. I'm gonna put this out. This has like ink-like consistency. Um, and the nice thing about this is it can go from airbrush to dip pen for calligraphy to refillable markers. Here we have some markers, um, but you'll notice this is not gonna hold a lot of texture. So if I brush that out, I don't get quite that texture that I would with the heavy bodies. So um, even with the fluid, so this is very thin in ink-like quality, great for airbrush, dip pen, staining, uh, mixed media, lots of possibilities. Here I have a refillable marker. You can buy uh, all sorts of empty markers and I've simply put some high flow in there as well. So lots of options with the high flow. The one thing I thought I'd show you for viscosity We'll need to put a couple of paper dowels down here. Is we'll compare the uh, high flow with the fluid. So I'm going to put the high flow out there. And then I'm going to put the fluid. And I just want to show you the difference in viscosity for these two. So if I tilt this up, you're going to see that the high flow is very ink-like in its consistency compared to our fluid. The fluid's much more like a heavy cream, takes a little bit longer to run down there. The high flow, you can see 
um, right down there, just kind of like an acrylic ink of sorts. All right, that's the fluid and the high flow. We're gonna take a look at our fifth line of paint. Now, I do and apologize that, before you jump over to yep. the the so flat um, that high flow. I had a question pop up here. Uh, is that because you keep saying that it's ink like? Um, can you mix it with other acrylic inks? Is that um, you can mix them with actually, other golden acrylic paints. Um, they mm -hmm. they're all compatible. Um, I don't know about other brands of. Uh, fluid or ink-like paints, um, but definitely all of Golden's paints, those five lines are all intermixable. And I actually have some additional uh, boards that we've done where we've mixed all of those together. Wonderful, because we also have other questions about the high flow. Um, specifically, you know, how long will it last kind of in that marker? <laughs> uh, honestly, I will tell you uh, both of these markers, um, I think the last time I filled this marker and used it now, it, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this, but the last time I used this marker, I think was um, maybe three or four months ago when we did uh, another video and it's just been sitting in there um, and, and it's doing fine. Um, yeah. I would say- As long I would, as it's not exposed to air, it should be relatively okay. Yeah. Yes, um, so make sure that the cap is on there tight. Maybe another good practice might be to wash out the tip or something, but you know, artists are you know, notorious for making their own choices. But like <laughs> I said, this one has lasted quite a long time uh, just in the container by itself. Um, and I would say if you have more questions, you know, definitely put them in the chat there, or you can email us help at goldenpaints.com and we'll have one of our material application specialists uh, get back to you. All right, so moving from the uh, high flow, we're going to look at our newest line, which is our so flat. Um, hopefully, you've seen these out um, at the stores. Um, so flat is the newest line of paint that we launched um, and it's consistently matte across the line. Um, it's super great for creating um, immersive fields of color. It has a tendency to um, self level beautifully. Um, and the versatility of this can really be expanded by mixing it with our other paints and I'll get into that a little bit when I show you the mixes so I'm just brushing this out. You can see that consistency. It's not quite like our fluids and it's not like our heavy body. It's its own consistency. Again, there it is wet. And then if we look at it dry, you can really see uh, wet. You can see because that polymer is wet, it's still got some light going on there, but you can look at the dry version there. Um, really um, no distraction or, or glare from that. Um, and you can see I'm able to achieve a little bit of texture, but not a whole lot. You guys and say that really does, because I've used this so flat um, a little bit here and there, because uh, you guys are awesome enough to send me a sample. I, I nice. store you for that so I could be familiar with your paint. Um, but that definitely does self-level kind of a, a, a quite a bit. Like it's it's not the high flow, but it definitely feels more like that um that fluid body right yes it, 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 i guess if you had to match it up to one or the other you could say it's a little closer to the fluid but that's not you know quite accurate but it's, definitely yeah. you can see very little um texture i intentionally tried to pile it up here so that you could see if you could build up texture and certainly if you had something that was underneath here like a gesso and there was a shape in that gesso um it would kind of contour itself to that but definitely for that um distraction of glare it just simply isn't there great for immersive fields of color um, the one thing i thought i'd talk about a little bit and we'll get into this when we talk about mixing as well uh, this is using our so flat uh, cad orange Whoop, let me move this wet board out of the way <laughs> so this is using uh, our so flat cad orange and then i mix it with our uh, fluid quin magenta and what I wanted to show you was just this um, light kind of popping off of the quin magenta which is a fluid and then looking at that 
CAD orange so flat, there's just no light bouncing off of that. You can see there's very little texture in, in that as well. So in terms of mixing them, yes, um, you can. They're compatible with each other. I just started creating a little scale of introducing more of this Quinn magenta into that color mix. And as I hold that in the light, what you can see too is the real flatness here and here, and a little bit of that gloss from the Quinn magenta the, from the fluid starts building up in there, as well as the brush stroke. So if you look at this last mixture compared to the first, um, very little brush stroke. So, uh, so flat, great self-leveling, a nice matte finish. We'll do a quick little recap. So we have our heavy body. Um, this is gonna hold the most texture, brush stroke and palette knife there. And then we have our fluid acrylic. You'll get a little texture there, but not a lot. The open, similar in consistency to heavy body, but considerably softer. Um, and it is a slow drying acrylic. So you have that extended working time uh, with that. And then of course our high flow acrylic on there. Um, great for airbrush, dip pens, refillable markers. And then the so flat, and you can see again with the light, um, the sheen on all of those compared to the so flat. The one thing I should say is we don't necessarily recommend that you put the open on this thick. Again, you wanna keep it to that one millimeter or less. Um, but if you choose to just know that this is gonna take a very long time to dry. Um, I did this one a week ago and this is still a little wet. I'm able to push on that at that thickness. So just keep yeah. that in mind. I did have a question and this is specifically me because I'm, you know, that artist that likes to break the rules. If we do the open that thick, cause I was gonna say, it, it looks like even though it takes a really long time to dry, there's no cracking or crazing with that art is there. No, and that, I mean, that's what makes the um, open uh, kind of unique um, is that even at that thick level, that doesn't happen. Um, but what you will notice if we take a real close look at that, I'm going to use um, a brush handle here and I'm going to push into this. And as I said, this is a week old, so I'm going to push into that. And you can see I was able to dent that surface. It's still um, very soft in there and it's a little bit like chewing gum in terms of um, that wet state. So that's why we don't recommend going that thick. I put it on there so you could kind of really get a sense of its texture. Um, if you do go a little bit over that one millimeter, um, keep in mind you're going to have to allow it to dry um, a longer time and that could be somewhere between 30 and 90 days, especially if you're getting into varnishing. Um, so, you know, uh, I would recommend that you go to justpaint.org. That's where we keep all of our articles and we have an extensive article um, about open there. So make sure you read that. But generally speaking, you wanna keep it very thin. Now, if you do go um, still within that range, uh, can you layer the open acrylics relatively easily? Like, I'm trying to make sure I'm reading this question right. So, Sorry. Right. So at this, at, so at, at this thinness on the board um, here, you can see that's pretty thin. And I'm going to show you blending on another board. Um, this is okay. And you can work with those colors. When you start putting it on this thick, um, you're going to run into problems. And we wouldn't recommend that you layer it on super thick. Very cool. Right. Let, me, let me double check that I have any other questions here that okay. have popped up. There's a lot. All right. <laughs> All right, so um, I did have somebody ask about if you use a uh, like a drying retarder with that heavy body or uh, even I guess the fluid or the high flow, does that act more like the open acrylic? It, it, it does a little bit. And I say that with a caveat because open is unique. Um, you can extend its um, working time a little bit with uh, open thinner. Uh, you can reactivate paint films. Um, but um, you don't want, again, you don't want to put it on there super thick. And I can only speak about it working with golden acrylics. Um, you know, if you want to mix it with someone else's other paints, I would definitely, you know, help at goldenpaints.com or um, definitely check with the other manufacturer because it's hard to know what's in, in theirs. Um, if you have heavy body and you wanted to put a little retarder in there to extend the working time, you could certainly do that. Um, 
or you could just mix it with a little open, but you're not going to be able to create the open binder yourself because that's kind of unique. So hopefully mm -hmm. that answered the question. Now, uh, speaking of that open acrylic one more time, because somebody yep. saw you dent that in, um, they were asking, is that dent going to stay there? Yeah, um, so, just, so just like the heavy body, whatever, when I squeeze that out, if I could get a tuba open, um, I'm going to squeeze that out for you. And show it looks you. Like, did that dent kind of already pop out a little bit or no it's in still, the, that red it's still there a little bit you can okay kind of see where that mark is you know where that dimple is mm -hmm. so um again you know this thickness we wouldn't recommend um uh, this is still wet. You can see that's still wet. And I could combine that with uh, heavy body or fluid or open, um, any of the other colors, um, and I'm able to blend that. Um, again, you want to try and keep it to one millimeter or less. Um, but whatever texture I leave it, you can see this one is already dry. And I did this one a week ago. Um, and so this I can't really dent. I can't push in there. Um, it's not denting because it's relatively thin compared to how thick this is, um, where I could probably dent that one if I wanted to. You see, I just did this application like maybe three days ago, um, and it's still quite wet. So, which Looks is like why we recommend. A yeah. Uh, now, if that was intentional, I guess is the idea. Um, they were they were kind of wondering. Would you be able to let it because it's not fully cured right now because that's no. why it's still denting in. Um, would you be able to kind of carve into it? Uh, you could, but again, we uh, we don't really recommend it being that thick. Yeah. So, you know, art artist prerogative, you can do whatever you want with the paint, but there are some recommendations. Um, and again, uh, you know, I would carefully read those or another manufacturer's directions that if you're mixing them with another paint um, for sure uh, you can always email us help at golden paints too mm -hmm. and then uh, we also had a question about which one would you suggest more for pouring mediums and kind of the pouring art uh, uh, fluids or high flow and uh, i guess kind of the, they're, they're easier yeah, the reason to yeah, they're just easier to incorporate. You know, um, you're going to kind of do yourself a disservice if you start with heavy body and you're trying to mix that in. There's some fluids and high flows are much easier to mix in. Yeah, I definitely found that um, the heavy body, it just takes a longer time to, you can use it. Yep. Artists, we break the rules. <laughs> but it just, it takes a really long time for it to incorporate. Whereas like the, the high flow, I know it just mixes in so well. Um, and then I had a very fun question. Uh, which one do you think would be the best for staining wood? Ah, staining wood, I'd go with high flow. Uh, high, high flow is very versatile. We've used it to stain wood. You can use it on fabric. You can use it in dip pens. Um, uh, um, it, it's very versatile. So yeah, definitely go with the high flow. Now, um, I did just have another question come up with right. the open acrylics. Sorry, yep. <laughs> there's all so many. Um, would there be any, any uh, binding issues if you mix the regular golden acrylics with the open acrylics? No, and in fact, you, you know, that's the perfect part into the next segment. I have some boards where we've done that. We've mixed uh, different paints with different colors. Perfect. Um, so let's, uh, we'll switch to the overhead. And I'll talk about those and hopefully that's gonna answer those questions, but we can always come back to those. So let me move this out of the way and we'll take a look at these. And so these were just little boards that I did with um, e each of the lines of paint to kind of mix them together. I got some wet yellow. So this is our heavy body. This is the one that's the white tube. Um, of course, it comes in larger jars, um, containers, um, but this is our heavy body and I'm simply mixing uh, heavy body. This happens to be our benzmodazolone yellow medium with our heavy body naphthol red light. And so you can see um, kind of in that mixing process, 
you know, I've just scooped a lot out. I put it on there very thick, use my brush to just swirl that around. You can see the texture there in the light, both a little on the glossy side. Uh, and then here's my kind of one-to-one -one ratio mix. I started out real thin and took it down to a very uh, kind of thin coat there. So this is heavy body mixed with heavy body, perfectly acceptable and doable. The next one up is the same heavy body, but instead I'm mixing it with our fluid. Again, same colors, the Benz yellow and the nap red light. Again, heavy body holding that texture. You can see the fluid doesn't hold a lot of texture. Um, it self levels a little bit. And then doing the mixture, you can see compared to this mixture of heavy body to heavy body, um, these uh, textures a little softer, a little rounder. So that's with our fluid. The next is the open. So here's my heavy body. Again, a lot of texture. My open, a little less texture, a little softer, a little rounder than the heavy body. And then here's my mix. Again, I'm able to build up a little texture, but I gotta keep in mind that I don't wanna put too much texture there with the open because it's gonna take a longer time to dry. So again, that ratio of how much heavy body or how much uh, open um, does matter for your drying time. And it will affect the drying time uh, of each. You know, if this takes an hour and this takes an, uh, 30 minutes, you know, this is gonna be somewhere in between that. This one up is our uh, high flow. Again, a little bit like the fluid, it's very hard to retain texture. I've mixed it with the heavy body. Um, this is the one I would recommend for staining wood, calligraphy, uh, airbrushing. Um, and you can see then here that mixture, you can see a little bit of the light. I'm able to um, retain a little bit of that texture and I can brush it out very thin. And then the last one, where we've done a one-to-one -one mix is same heavy body, same Ben's yellow. And I've mixed this with the so flat. So immediately if I hold that in the light, you can see how that so flat eliminates that glare where you get quite a bit of that with the heavy body. In terms of mixing them, um, again, because of that consistency of the so flat, you're not gonna get as much texture um, as if you were just using the heavy body by itself. Um, and I'm able to brush it out really kind of pretty smoothly um, and not have a lot of brush stroke. You'll see though, a little bit of that gloss does carry over at that kind of one-to-one -one ratio. So that's all of them mixed together. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you, um, this is just two boards, um, quick where we can talk a little bit about adhesion. Um, this is our heavy body. And this is so flat. This is the phthalo green blue shade. And then we used a little bit of the Ben's yellow on there. So again, all of those just, they can be mixed together. Uh, no adhesion problems there um, on all of those. All right, so. It is such a talk. bright yellow color. Sorry, I'm just like, it's like vibrating. It's so pretty. Yeah, the, that's the <laughs> Ben's, uh, Ben's yellow uh, medium. Mm -hmm. All right, so then how would we use these? So I, we had to start thinking about how we would use these. Um, and um, this is one of those things where every artist is gonna have a different idea about how to put them together. Um, and certainly there are dozens more beyond the, just the ones I'm presenting. This was just how I started it kind of as a painter. Um, so what I did was, this is kind of the finished piece. And then what I started with was this one. Um, this is our CAD yellow again. And I feel like maybe the yellow is just a tad off there on the monitor for me. So hopefully it's a reading for you. Um, and, I just, yellow. <laughs> <laughs> and I just brushed it on there. So again, talking about heavy body and just hanging on to that brush stroke, you can see it's retained all the brush stroke. And then here I put it on kind of thick uh, with a palette knife. And so to get this um, kind of effect, um, I just brushed over it with a fluid. Um, and what that looks like here, uh, I have this, I'll lay this one on top. I simply brushed across that surface with our uh, fluid. And this is the nap red again. Uh, and then I used a very damp brush. Um, and then here I used a damp brush and mopped some off. So what I can show you, 
We'll squeeze a little bit of this out and I'll demo that. This is the nap red light. Any questions so far? Um, we did have a couple questions, but they're All not right. pertaining to this specific demo. So I can ask them a little later. All right. Because I I'm am gonna... very, I, I feel like we're very enthralled with what you're doing. And it is <laughs> okay. so, That's so a good thing. <laughs> Um, so this is kind of what we were going for. This is combining heavy body and fluid. So I have these two uh, and I'm, I'm just using a wide brush um, and it's, it's um, damp to the extent um, that I'm just gonna brush that across that surface. And so you can see um, the fluids are great um, for covering a large area quickly. There's a lot of texture in here. So you won't get um, complete even coverage because of that thick texture. Now, if I introduce a little bit of water to this and I'm just dipping my brush in water and adding a little bit of water, like not even 5% um, to the surface and I'm brushing over that, I start to get some interesting things happening. And you see how all of a sudden it's really hanging in those lines from the brush stroke and I'm getting puddling in these areas where we created a lot of texture with the um, palette knife. If I use a really damp brush and brush again, um, I can go back with a clean or dry brush, or you could use like a lint-free cloth and just kind of work that surface a little bit to wipe or mop some off. So you have lots of possibilities here. And I just kind of, for me, I just kind of fell in love with doing this process. And you can see how you can alter this by going from uh, the straight fluid right onto the board, a damp brush here, and then a little bit of water here. And we have, again, referring back to that justpaint.org, we have a great article about uh, how much water you can use with your fluid or your acrylics in general. So this is- <laughs> All right, so this is fluid over heavy body as one combination. Very, very cool. I definitely was uh, curious about that, uh, the adhesion issues. Now, uh, would you say that this process would work? Because I mean, that, that high flow is just so pigmented, but it has that beautiful transparency to it. Would you be able to mix in like a medium, say like, um, like a glazing medium and get kind of a similar effect as well? Oh, absolutely. And so what we've done here is we've stuck strictly to the paint because we didn't want to complicate it by adding in mediums or um, glazing liquid or any of those things. So um, almost all of this is true for transferring it over if you were going to introduce mediums. We thought we would just stick to the paint by itself without adding anything to keep it kind of simple. But um, certainly experiment away. Works terrific, uh, both high flow or fluid with uh, glazing liquid or any of the mediums. Again, they're easy to incorporate versus like a heavy body, which would just take a little more work. Um, speaking of the high flow, what I thought, um, so we have this fluid here. So I'm gonna lay that one aside. I'm gonna do the same thing with the high flow, just so you can see the difference. Um, if I show you the, this is the fluid board. And this is the high flow board. You can see there's a little bit of difference there, um, a little more noticeable to the eye, I think, but certainly on screen as well. Um, so they just create a slightly different effect. And so again, you have to, as an artist, experiment and see which one you kind of like the most. So let me demo that one. Um, again, same CAD yellow that we used before with the fluid. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of that high flow out. And, you know, again, the high flow um, says right across there, high flow acrylics. I'm going to shake. The, one of the things we do recommend with our high flow is that you shake. There's a little bead in there so you can agitate that. And while you're shaking this, because I've learned this the hard way, put your yep. finger over the top. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so that, which is why I'm not shaking again on camera. You always want to keep your finger over there just in case you left it open especially if you're shaking it towards a group of people, then that's kind of a whole separate video we could do. All right, so heavy body. Uh, again, I just brushed this out so you can see some brush stroke there. And then uh, with the palette knife, um, I'm again, just gonna use a brush and I'm gonna brush that uh, high flow right across the surface by itself. 
So one of the things you can see with the fluid is the fluid a, a little bit thicker and it covered up a lot more of that detail. A high flow um, leaves a little bigger gaps, you know, maybe a minuscule difference, but depending on the technique you wanna achieve, um, I like that. So again, that was using the brush dry, just brushing across that surface. Um, remember it's used for um, airbrush. So it has a retarder in there, which allows it to stay just a little bit wet longer because you wouldn't want that, um, kind of drying and clogging your airbrush equipment or those refillable markers. Um, now I'm gonna introduce a little bit of water just like we did before. I'm gonna use a damp brush and I'm gonna spread that across the surface. One pass and two passes. Now I'm gonna add a lot of water. Again, when I say a lot, I mean a real wet brush. And I'm gonna spread that across the surface, go back a couple of times. And you can see how that really starts to pick up those brush strokes and that texture from the, both the palette knife and the brush. Um, when I did these as experiments, I tend to, to like the fluid a little bit more, um, but that's just a personal preference as an artist for me. So certainly I would say do your experiments and see which one you like more, but I love um, that ability of it to kind of fill in and enhance the texture. So that's both using our fluid and our high flow on our heavy body. I have one more example. So the red and yellow, a little punchy. So if you wanted to do something that was a little more mute, I can walk you through those steps. So kind of the same idea that we just um, started with as our finished, and I'll walk you through how I created those steps. So okay, I started I with- I you do this. This is so, so pretty looking. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, I'm just like, oh, ooh, look at that. Yeah, and so this one, I, I combined all three. I did our heavy body, I did our high flow, and I did a fluid. Um, so I just put the heavy body on first and I used both a brush and a palette knife to create some texture there. Um, and then I just used a very wet brush and I applied some zinc white. And the nice thing about the um, fluids is using that water, I can thin that out a little bit. And so the zinc white is already transparent. So I chose that over the titanium uh, white. Um, so I brushed that thin layer on and then I did the same um, that I just demonstrated on the yellow with both the fluid and the high flow just to kind of give you a sense. And I just kept doing that repeating and building up those layers. You can see the tape line uh, where I did like layer one, layer two, and then layer three, four, and five. And then the finished one, this is about maybe 10 to 15 layers, just passing back and forth with those colors, combination of fluid and high flow. Um, just gives, a, I just love the combination of both the surface texture and the pooling of those uh, colors. So that's using heavy body fluid and high flow together. That's Next so up, lovely. was there a question, Emmy? No, I was gonna say, I, that was just, it's so lovely. Those surface textures, like I just, I want to reach through the camera and touch this. Like right. <laughs> That's great to hear. Well, remember, heavy body <laughs> fluid and high flow. That was the secret combination. Um, all right, so talking about, um, we're going to move gears and talk a little bit about open. Um, er earlier, we said that it stays wet. Um, it's a slow drying acrylic. Uh, if you put it in palettes, you can save your color mixes or you can just save your palette by sealing it uh, several days or... Uh, even weeks. Um, here I just started out with a little bit of Ben's yellow medium and titanium white. And what I want to do is I'm going uh, to squeeze out a little bit there. And you would, you know, probably want to maybe do this on your palette paper or your palette. Just for expediency, I'm doing it right here because I'm going to put this aside. Um, and so right out of the tube, just like this, um, Again, a little softer than our heavy body, but certainly will retain its brush stroke. Um, and then like heavy body right now, um, these blend you know, just as easily um, by mixing just like our heavy body colors would. Um, but the heavy body is gonna dry 
where this open is going to stay wet. So what I'm going to do is um, you can kind of see the, the little uh, amounts of drops that I put on there. I'm going to leave that. And at the end of the demo, I'll come back to this and we'll blend a little bit more and you'll see how that's going to stay wet for the next, you know, half an hour or so. Okay. So heavy, but I mean, excuse me, that's our open. Leave that brush with that. And the next one up, we're going to look at using the open and the fluid. Let me move these and I'm going to put them right off camera so I can get to them at the end. As you can imagine, we have a lot of boards going here. Uh, so this one, I'm going to use uh, two fluid colors and our open. Um, and this is kind of the finished effect here. And how we started was simply with a board uh, that we painted with our um, yellow ochre on there. And then we started uh, stamping on there or using a block print. And we did that with the open. And remember that we said that open was ideal for some printmaking technique. So we could use the open uh, in that fashion. So let me demo that for you. And this was a simple little uh, block print that we created with some lines. So on my palette paper, uh, this is our Titan Green Pale. So I'm going to squeeze some of that out. And remember the open, very slow drying. I'm going to use a, just a soft rubber brayer. And I'm going to spread some of this out on my palette. And I want to do that so I can ink up my uh, block. Let me lay that aside there so you can kind of see. So I'm just going to take this little block and press it into the open. The open stays wet. Let me move that over a little more so it's on camera. <laughs> uh, and now I've uh, transferred that to this uh, block print and I can simply kind of stamp it onto that surface and I just get a repeated design of what we've carved in there. Um, so a terrific option for some printmaking techniques. Um, and then where the fluid um, second color of fluid comes back in is I can use this um, kind of like a glaze without adding any glaze medium and, and go over this. Uh, because this is wet, we're going to switch to the next board. And I'm just going to brush some of this out. And you can see I've already done that uh, one layer here. So I'm going to put a little bit out. This is our phthalo green blue shade. And in the fluid, and I'm just going to brush that out. And if I keep working that quickly, you can see I can get that pretty thin and create a glaze over that surface. So I would just keep going until I got it over this surface um, and covered uh, that particular part. So that's one way of combining our fluids and our open and doing a little of printmaking in there. While we're talking about the fluids, I thought one of the things I wanted to point out was the transparency and opacity again. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to create a glaze, one of the things you maybe want to consider starting with is something that is a little more transparent. Again, having those black bars under there is, um, really helps you determine which colors those are. So let me brush that out on to this one. And I just painted this with fluids. This is our teal and our turquoise. So if I use something like the chromium oxide green, you can see it's pretty opaque. Um, and so if I brush that on here, it's going to cancel out a lot of the information that's you know, underneath there. So in terms of choosing your colors, you know, think about what you want to do with those and why you would choose something that is opaque or something that is more transparent. So let me put out a transparent color. This is our nickel azo yellow. And that chromium oxide has those black bars underneath that green swatch. Yes, correct. It's so all, opaque all, that it's obliterated, right? Yeah, 
all of the all of the containers, um, whether it's the heavy body or the fluid or the high flow, have this black bar system on there with the paint applied on those black bars. So it really gives you a sense of its opacity or its opaqueness. And those those little uh, swatches on the bottle, that is real paint, right? Yes, th those are hand painted on there. Yep, and you really get to see the sense of the color as well. Right. So here using the Nico Azo yellow, you can see I'm brushing that out. Um, quite transparent compared to the chromium oxide green. Um, if I left this dry and put on two, three, four coats, I would start to cancel out some of the information that's under there. Um, but on first pass, you can see how opaque that chromium oxide green is compared to the um, Nico Azo yellow, which is very transparent. So if you don't have any glazing medium and you want to create a glaze, you can just use the fluids. Just know you need to kind of determine which um, colors are a little more transparent. You can do that by just looking at those bottles. Um, and then capitalizing on the fluids, one of the things that the fluids are great for is they got that heavy cream consistency. So here we just painted out, did some drops, tilted it and allowed them to run. But that gives you the possibility of you know, kind of following along with that fluid nature of those fluids. And here we've just poured those out and left them run just like we did here to kind of create these trees and then simply just spattered some on there. So lots of possibilities, um, you know, just really capitalizing on the fluids ability to run. That is so fun. I never would have thought to use like paint drips as trees. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, easy for me. <laughs> I don't want to paint all those leaves. So if I just spatter it on there, it looks like leaves and we're good to go. Um, again, <laughs> yeah, again, there are, you know, numerous options, uh, how you can combine these. Um, just know that mixing them all together, you know, does affect their drying times. Um, but certainly um, fluids is one of my favorites. All right, let's switch over to, we're gonna take a look at using our heavy body and a slow flat color. So here we have that Quinn Magento, one of my favorites, um, and our slow flat yellow green. What I've done is we prepped a board. Um, and so we're just talking about masking off some areas and playing both with um, sheen, contrast of sheen and texture. And you can kind of see what that looks like on this board. Um, I've already taped this off and allowed it to dry. So we just used a commercial stencil here. And then we just used some of that low tack painters tape to create uh, a pattern. And we just uh, brushed it on and then palette knife here. Um, so you can see we were able to build up the thickness, but I like that contrast between the gloss of the heavy body and the so flat. Um, so using that Quinn Magenta and um, just, you know, in terms of creating a hard edge, a little bit of that tape. And I'm just gonna use my palette knife and put that heavy body on there. And you could do this, you know, creating the stencil or mask yourself, or you can buy a commercial, or you can skip that part and go, you know, directly to your own kind of application. So you just peel that off, you get a pretty clean, nice crisp edge there. And when that dries, you'll have that contrast between the, the glossiness of the heavy body and that flat matteness of the so flat. And you can definitely see that on this wet one. And we have a little video here at the end. You can kind of see that contrast in the light. And then now to take it, that. Oh, sorry, I was gonna say, when it comes to pulling off that tape, do you always recommend doing it while your paint's still wet or let it dry? <laughs> um, <laughs> I've done both. I've, I do it mostly wet, but there are times where I let it dry. Um, one of the things that we didn't do, sometimes I, when the tape is down, and this is getting out into the weeds a little, but I'll use a little matte medium to you know brush over that tape and allow that to dry. So I keep a nice tight uh, hard edge there. That's so cool. Um, and then this one is just playing with, this was our cerulean blue. Um, and the uh, cerulean blue 
um, um, chromium is the shiny part, and then the cerulean blue hue in SoFlat is the, um, the matte, the SoFlat color. And again, you can kind of see how you can just play with sheen with just two uh, paints, um, our heavy body and our um, so flat, and we have a little video of that as well. That is so satisfying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so next time you're stressed out at the office, you can just flip back and forth between a little so flat and a little heavy body. All right, next up, I thought we'd talk a little bit about using so flat and um, our high flow. And then combining that also with some heavy body. So um, I've painted one surface uh, with our so flat, and this happens to be the bismuth vanadate yellow. I've just painted that surface. Again, you can see um, not a lot of sheen there at all. Nice matte, velvety, smooth surface. And I'm going to use the high flow now to kind of paint on there. And so that's what I've done here. I painted on there with high flow. I'm using permanent violet dark, and I just put a little bit in a container so I have easy access. Um, so if your thing is drawing, you know, maybe put down a little bit of the um, so flat as a surface and then use the high flow to draw on there. And remember the high flow has a little bit of retarder in there so it stays wet, um, perfect for airbrush. And we have a board that kind of shows you that. Um, you could even use the high flow like a water media sort of effect on here. So lots of different options. One of the things I thought about was creating subsequent layers with those. So on this one, if I hold this in the light, I'll explain this to you. And then I have a video clip of this um, dry as well. But on this side, I put the so flat over top of the high flow. And here I put the same color but I use the heavy body instead of the so flat. So I have my lines that I've painted. And then that middle one that's shiny, you can see that's the heavy body and then the so flat on the end. Um, and so what I liked about this idea was a way to build up layers, um, but also impact the sheen. So that's heavy body with um, so flat and high flow for that combination. And then, as we said, um, great for airbrushing. So using high flow, um, again, I put out CAD orange and I've done that in a heavy body on the top. So you can see palette knife and then brush stroke. And then here um, I use the CAD orange so flat. And what we've done is we had one of our material application specialists do a little airbrushing on there uh, to create some shadow. And I believe he used uh, neutral and there we have a video. So you can go right from the container to airbrush. And you can see on here, you know, the shadow that he did. And then here we've also done a little highlighting. So that's the high flow. Uh, and remember that one will say high flow acrylics on there. Um, great for airbrush, dip pens, um, all kinds of possibilities. All right, so how might we blend all of this together in some paintings? So of course, my favorite kind of was the heavy body with the fluid and the combining that with so flat. So here, an ampersand panel, uh, just a wood ampersand panel um, and uh, gesso and then the heavy body. The heavy body was brushed on there and a combination of palette knife and brushing. Um, and then because I liked that kind of fluid look on top, I just kind of brush over that again using a damp brush uh, and I'm going to brush over that surface. If I feel like it's too much on there, I can come back. Let me pull this down a little bit. If I feel like that's too much, I can come back with a clean um, dry brush and I can brush across that to create something that's much more subtle. Um, I could even use a paper towel or a lint free cloth um, to mop some off. So I feel like you have lots of options with this and I really like that technique. And what that looks like kind of finished, I added to this one, I did that red and then I added the so flat 
and this happens to be the cobalt teal. And so I really like kind of the contrast of that gloss to the so flat. So that one's quite punchy. I have one that's a little more subtle. And again, same idea. I started with heavy body neutral gray and I mopped a lot of white and grays over that surface, a little bit of red. And in this case, then I used the Payne's gray so flat. So I have that contrast between kind of the gloss on top and the so flat on the bottom. Um, so that brings us close to the end. I'm gonna pull that one uh, board back out and look at the blending with the open. Yes, please do. I had a note here to, to remind you in case, because I am notorious for getting those things. So right. <laughs> just in case, make sure he blends those. <laughs> well, I, I, wrote a, I wrote a special note too, so I wouldn't forget. Love All it. right, so here's the same board. We put those colors out. I have um, some red on there already. So I'm just gonna pull that down. And again, we wouldn't recommend putting this on that thick, but you can see that after, you know, about 30 minutes, we did it at the halfway mark, that this is very still quite wet, not skinning over. Again, if I put this in a closed palette, um, I could keep this for several days if I made a unique mixture. Um, so open's terrific for plain air painting and that blendability. If you're used to working in oils, but you want to switch to acrylics, open might be the way to go. All right, let's recap. It's almost a full hour. <laughs> All so right, much so, information, but oh, so good. Yeah, a lot. Well, and here's the thing. You're not going to remember everything. So maybe mm -hmm. just focus on the one or two or three paints that you liked and the technique Very that true. went with that. Um, definitely email us help at golden paints. Uh, and also this, this is going to be available for rewatching as soon as we sign off of here on Facebook. And then within 24 hours, we typically do upload it to the Jerry's Artorama YouTube channel as well for rewatching. So you don't have to remember it all. You can always rewatch it. <laughs> That's true. So again, our five lines of acrylic paint, we have our heavy body holds a lot of brush stroke and texture, uh, and then up our fluids, um, a lot less texture, and our open, great for plein air painting and blending and some mono printing techniques. Our high flow, excellent for dip pens, mark, refillable markers, airbrush, and then our so flat. Again, look at the light across that surface, none on the so flat. Um, nice for immersive fields of color. You can expand all of these ranges by mixing them together. Just know that they're going to impact the drying time of each other. I think that's it. Emmy, do you have any questions for us? Uh, I think we got to the majority of them. Um, we had quite a few come through. And of course, if you guys do have more questions that we didn't get to on the show, uh, one more time, Kevin, that email that they can send it to. <laughs> Yep, it's on the bottom of the screen, help at goldenpaints.com. If you forget the email address, you can just look us up, Golden Paints, and give us a ring. Definitely. So let me switch back over to this view. I just want to make sure that people could read that because, you know, thumbnails, they get kind of small. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but Kevin, thank you so much for joining me on the show. It was so knowledgeable, and you, as always. But just to know the difference in the different types of golden acrylics is, I think, really a key step for those trying to shop, especially online or, you know, you go to a store and you can't pull it out of the jar and try it right then and there. So to understand what they do is so valuable as an artist. Uh, but I mean, to know that they also all mix together. Yes, that's the, you know, again, you have the five lines. Um, they all have their unique purposes, but you can really expand that by, you know, creating unique mixes of them together. A lot of those mixes, if you're using open, you can carry over and save. So yes, get out there and try it. Yes, I know I'm going to be experimenting uh, and playing with some art paints today uh, as soon as I get off the show. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Again, Kevin, thank you so much for being here. It's thank always you, a Emmy. pleasure. And everybody, make sure you join me next week because I'm going to actually be going over how to start an oil painting using water-soluble oils. So all those water-soluble oil questions that you had, make sure you jump on because we have a lot of brands that we offer and I'm going to be going over how to actually 
start a painting. So I'm very excited. I hope to see you guys all then and have a good evening.